Welcome back, Me Too Fighting Series fans. I'm Gina Lucille, and today we are speaking with Anna Crutchfield, who is making her professional debut in the V2 cage for V2 Fighting Series 179. Let's see what she has to say. Hey! Hey! What's How are happening? You? I'm great. You look beautiful, look at you. So do you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my Stop goodness. It. No, I was I was planning on looking decent, but I got home from the gym a lot later than I thought I was going to. So no, sorry, you get what you get. <laughs> First of all, you are stunning inside the cage and outside the cage so stop it you're so well, modest you. though no you are and then obviously like we see you on instagram you look like a savage okay <laughs> so I'm, I'm really actually i'm super thrilled to have you on here because you were one of my first interviews ever in mma really yeah i didn't even I, realize that yeah because i did the show and i still have that interview on my phone that was what one it was like b2 130 something it's you been like a minute Tory and you yeah. yeah 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 that was that was almost two years ago it, i know because i was yeah, just doing the horse stuff and then i jumped into the uh, you know broadcasting for the mma and i did one show in shepherdsville kentucky and then i went down and um filmed that other show i can't remember which one it was but you um but yeah you fought tori and you TKO'd her, and we went back, and I was like, I'm interviewing her. <laughs> hey. like, she is a force to be reckoned with. She's phenomenal. You've really, like, you do have the whole package for this this sport, any sport, really, but then you're just so decorated as a fighter, and um, so, yeah, you were my first interview. Hey, well, good. Now we can replay that this weekend, and I know. we'll have the same result, so... Take two. Hey, I am, first of all, I am so excited when Hard Rock sent me this fight. And I actually spoke with your opponent yesterday, and she's excited too because it's, I mean, this is a fight. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. No, I'm and it's very like, much excited about it. Yeah. So tell me what's going through your mind because you are undefeated in the B2 cage. Um, I mean, you're, like I said, you're an animal. I'm always going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> like, Anna is an animal. <laughs> so how are you are you excited okay i'm just really thrilled to have you on here so you are making your pro debut super exciting you've had a lot go on this year you've signed with iridium making your pro debut um coming off of a win i mean let's let's talk about first signing with iridium how's that how's that oh i mean it's been great uh jason house and i work directly with eric anders um and it's just super cool being um, signed under him because one, he's a close friend of mine. So I trust and I value his opinion and um, he's on our team. So I get to work with him closely and I really just, I trust that he has my best interest at heart. So everything he says, I'm like, all right, well, you've been here, you've walked the walk and you've made it to where I want to be. So um, I definitely, I, I love that. Well, and having a manager is so important. And I think I really want to, you know, reiterate that on this, this segment, because you have to be, you're a fighter, you're an entertainer, you're an athlete, but you also have to be managed by proper companies who care about you. They know the sport and they can really accelerate your career because good management can accelerate you and bad management can ruin your career for your life. Yeah, no, exactly. And I'm the type of person that I'm, I'm never going to turn down a fight. You can ask Eric. I'm 100% on his ass all the time. Like, you got me something? You got me something? So it's kind of nice that he, too, can, like, kind of hold me back when I need to be held back because sometimes I need to be safe for myself. Well, and that's that's exactly it. You need to be protected from yourself because fighters are, especially like you, you're go-getters. You're, you know, you go in there. You're, you're an animal. Like, you want to fight everybody, and you're not – you're not going to turn down a fight. So that's where management has to step in and say, hey, look, we know you could fight this person, but let's wait. Like, let's make it make sense financially because it's not that you are, you can't fight this person or you are not, you know, capable. It's let's wait for the dollar signs to roll in because yeah. it's a payday. Every time you take a fight now, it's a payday and you have to make it worth your while. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. So let's talk about your opponent, Shai, um, or Shea, Shea Bowers. I mean, she's, she fought in LFA. She fought a really, you know, she fought a tough opponent, you know, heavier weight class. She's moving down. Um, what do you expect from her? Um, I 
pretty much know her game plan coming in is she's going to immediately try to look for that takedown. Um, I've seen most of her fights I've seen on YouTube, but uh, she kind of has the same game plan every time. Like she knows exactly what she's going to do and she seems to do a really good job implementing her game plan. So I'm very excited to go in there and kind of implement got my game plan a little bit better, you know? Right. It's that's all that's all it is, is just implementing your game plan, improvising when you have to making the right adjustments, which I've seen your coach do time and time again. I think the last time I saw you, you were with Rebecca and she won and um, yeah. I interviewed her and you guys, um, first of all, Rebecca, I mean, she's she's on her way, you know, on a, on a roller coaster yeah. up. But she's on um, way up for sure. Yeah, you guys really you know, changed up her game plan and you did as well. I mean, you, you have an amazing eye for the sport. You've been doing this for so long. Let's talk about little Anna because little <laughs> Anna has been fighting for a really long time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I started this journey. It feels like a lifetime ago. I was 12 years old when I um, had my first fight. So it's been over a decade in the sport, but I started off just in the boxing side of things, just striking. And then I moved into the kickboxing world, which eventually led me into this world. So um, I feel like my journey has taken many different like twists and turns. Like 12 year old Anna thought she'd be a pro fighter making lots of money at 18. So here I am um, making my pro debut at 25 because obviously God has different plans. Um, but I'm cool with that. I feel like very confident in my training and everything that's happened over the course. I feel like this is the right time. Like before I wanted it so bad, but it just wasn't the right time. And I feel like now the timing's all perfect. Everything's lining up. And where do you feel yourself going? You know, like everyone says they're going to go to the top, but where, where do you feel yourself in the sport? Everyone's going to fit in differently. What impact yeah. do you have? Um, well, I plan on finishing the year three or four. No, hopefully um, by four, no, five and no, I can get a shot at the contender series and get signed in. But I really just want to be an advocate for all females that are in this sport, because I look back um, in 2012 when I had my first fight, uh, my first ever boxing. So how it works for boxing is you win the states and at the state tournament, you go to regionals. After the regional tournament, you go to nationals. So you have to win each one of those. Right. So my um, first fight, I had a walkover, meaning I didn't have an opponent at state. So I automatically also state champion. <laughs> and then that qualified me to go to regionals. Um, I ended up winning my first fight at regionals, which qualified me to go to nationals, or so I thought, right? Um, and then come to find out, they told me that only the guys go to nationals, that women aren't allowed to compete um, because we could get pregnant. And that's what they told a 12-year-old kid. Like, that's why women couldn't go. And this is for this was for silver gloves, meaning ages I want to say 12 to 16 or something. I, I could be wrong in ages, but very young kids. Silver gloves is before gold gloves. Um, so immediately that just didn't sit right with me. I was like, what do you mean? I don't get to go to nationals because I could get pregnant. I'm like one, what? I'm 12. <laughs> two, that doesn't make sense because it takes two to tango. But um, me and my dad filed an emergency grievance against USA Boxing and we ended up going to a court hearing and we had the rule overturned. So women were actually allowed to go to nationals and compete. And that's when it really like sunk into me. Like that was only, that was in 2000 and I can't even remember the year, probably 11 or 12, but women didn't even get to go compete in boxing in the Olympics until 2012. Like it's just, I know it's getting better, um, but there was a point where even Dana White was like, women will never compete in the UFC. So um, I just think being a pioneer for this sport, like Ronda Rousey was, like, I want to be that name, like girls look back and like, oh, Anna Crutchfield did that. I can do it. And you are, you're going to do it. You're speaking it. <laughs> Thank you. I know that was a long answer. <laughs> No, it's perfect. That's what we're here for. And I like, I tell everybody, I said, like, look, like, we're going to kick back, grab yourself a, a drink, you know, coffee, whatever you want to do. And like, we're just going to, we're just going to, you know, we're just going to chat. You know? yeah. <laughs> but seriously, like you are, you're, a, you're going to be a pioneer for the sport. And I mean, if you think about it, MMA and, you know, the UFC has only been around, I mean, they're celebrating their 30th year. B2 has, you know, this is, they're almost at 200 shows. This is 179 we're making, a, you know, more promotions are popping up and really doing a lot for the sport. And women are more open, you know, more, more people are open to have women in this. And I, I totally, I'm an advocate for female athletes. You know, I was one for a really long time. 
And that's why I love doing my job here because like, if I wasn't doing this, like I would love to be in the cage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Love Girl, I've that. seen you in the ring. I've seen you in there. <laughs> I don't anymore. I got them kids. I got the dog. Got the <laughs> You're still in there. I see you on your Instagram. You still, you still train, right? Um, I mean, I hit the gym. I, I hit the gym. I like to, you know, when I go to the gyms, I'm more filming the fighters and getting the storylines and, and yeah, doing the work stuff. side of it. Yeah. yeah, because, you know, one thing that um, my industry had a huge lack of was the influence that they allowed this sport to have on other people. And they didn't allow the actual people who are in the industry to tell their stories and to give them more of a perspective of what the sport is like. So it, I'm really passionate about, I want people to know your story because these aren't, you guys aren't backyard brawlers. I mean, we have street beefs and all that stuff too, but like, <laughs> let's face it. Like you guys are, are mixed martial artists. You're professional yeah. athletes. You are, it's so hard to get you on an interview because you are in the gym training or coaching young ones. And I love that when I see you on social media coaching young girls and, you know, just young children in general, because we need to instill this back into life, you know, like yeah. a normal life. Like this is normal. Stop being an influencer. These influencers, like everybody wants to be an influencer. What? Come on, do something. <laughs> no, I your- completely agree. Yeah. No, it's, Ron it's, Krause honestly, said it perfect. it's a huge blessing. Like I yeah. love the fact, like the little kids I coach, I'm in charge. I teach our, um, leadership team, which is essentially our, what is going to be our competition for the striking, the kids, the competition team. Um, But it's like, it's amazing how much of an influence I can tell, like things I say or like references I'll make, like it just rubs off on them. So I know that that type of influence can come from anywhere. So the fact that we have, I have three hours a week with them to like be that positive influence and just really just teach them the love of martial arts. Cause at the end of the day, I don't care if they go and become world champion kickboxers. Like That'd be pretty dope. Don't get me wrong. But like <laughs> just seeing them like love something and be passionate about it. And a lot of them don't have like a great life at home or something like that. So just being that positive um, influence is really awesome. Well, and you're also instilling in them a sport that has self-discipline, self-respect, self-control, and they're going to carry the on like that is going to when you instill those values into the younger generation that sticks with them and it grows with them and hopefully they pass it on. Like when you pass on knowledge, I think, you know, a true fighter, a true athlete is someone who performs in the cage and does, you know, or, or, you know, on their platform and does really well. But then when you can take that and bring it into the gym and then help others, that's a true gift. Like that really, I feel gives you like that warmth inside that soul. Like this is, it it serves a purpose. And so I see you doing that a lot. You're not only an amazing athlete, but you're a really exceptional steward to the sport. So that's very, very appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I mean it for sure. And that's, you know, said by a lot of people, especially your gym. I I definitely want to touch base on your gym because, you know, SBG is is a solid camp. You guys have a, a ton of killers in there. And every time you guys come, you guys you show up and you show out. Yes, we do. That is what we are known for. Um, Yeah, that's why I am even more so excited that my pro debut is happening in Trustville, like right here in our backyard. You know, we're going to travel well. I've got, I think my entire gym is coming. There's like, and anyone that's not there, they're like, send me the pay-per-view. Like, I'm definitely going to watch it. So it's stupid awesome, like the support system I come from. But yeah, the coaching, the teammates, the training partners, everything. I literally could not ask for a better team. I, I moved across two states to train with these guys and I don't regret it at all. Oh, that's dedication. So your father is really big. You know, I always, I always hear you talk about your dad and how big he has um, been an influence and, and really instilled a big base. I mean, what's your relationship like with him, with the fighting? My dad, he has been like my best friend through this entire journey. Um, so he never fought or anything like that. A lot of people think he had some kind of background in martial arts, but he didn't. He was just really a supportive dad. Um, so when there was a boxing gym that came to my hometown in Green or in Traveler's Dress, South Carolina, um, I was like, hey, I want to try this. Like more so just to like stay in shape. I didn't really have any interest in like fighting, um, but I was like, this is a cool way like to work out. Like I ran cross country, so I thought it would be cool. And from the second I walked into the gym, my dad was 100% involved. He immediately became like a student of the sport with me. 
And then um, he and I traveled the entire country, the entire world. We've been to Italy, to Bosnia, everywhere together um, to fight. And so it just kind of became like our thing. Like my mom, she is amazing too. Um, a lot of times she was at home and she was like staying with my siblings and taking care of everything. So I don't want to leave her out because right. my mom's always been amazing and supportive. Um, but fighting has definitely been like mine and my dad's thing. Like this man drove four and a half hours to watch me do my a jujitsu tournament. Like he something that like is totally like it's just a regular naga not even like a idjjf it was like a naga and he drove four and a half hours just to see me compete and then drew drove four and a half hours back so he is just he's a rock he's my rock in this for sure so supportive do you feel like that has had a huge impact in your career having such a solid foundation and just like just with your for sure and your mom yeah yeah. Like just having that, like, cause it became a point, like after I graduated high school, I was in that spot where I was like, do I want to pursue the Olympics? Do I want to go to college? Like, where's my life going to go? And they were my biggest supporters. They were found out. They always found a way, even if they didn't have the money to send me to these camps, to send me to these big tournaments. Um, when I was struggling with which, which decision to make, they were always right there. Like my biggest supporters for sure. And without them, like, starting off you know it's kind of like a starving artist type thing when you're a fighter we don't make very big money um until you really like make it so i'm in my mid-20s and i didn't go to college i went straight into this dream so they have financially supported me they have morally supported me mentally everything they've just been amazing and you definitely want to give them back for sure i cannot wait until i get my first paycheck and then my mom is never going to pay her phone bill ever again because she's <laughs> always paid like my phone bill. Like, I just, I can't wait to be I able to give that. back what they give me. <laughs> I told my phone mom that. Bills she, for like, life. <laughs> <laughs> she said, that's all I'm going to get. And I was like, no, you'll get more. <laughs> but I just want to make wait. sure you never pay your phone bill again. <laughs> You're like, I've got to start with the phone, mom. And then, and then we'll work yeah, on we're the, start house so, and, and the vacations uh, yeah. and <laughs> all the Yeah, things. you wait till... Wait till Dana starts paying out my bonuses and we'll talk yeah. bigger, but let's start off with the phone bill. You're like, they're going to think twice about having me back because uh, Cerrone, <laughs> um, I'm a TKO or I'm, okay, I'm going to knock out everybody. See, that's what I'm saying. I was wondering, I was talking to Eric, um, my manager, because he would, as an amateur, he would send me performance bonuses. Like if I got a TKO, he would send me money. So I was like, tell me what these performance bonuses are looking like as a pro. And he just laughed at me and I was like, uh, why are you laughing? <laughs> like, who do I have to talk to about my performance of the night? <laughs> Such a businesswoman, and I love yeah, that. Yeah, I don't know if, it, if it's hard rock. Who do I need to talk to after? Yeah. I mean, we'll discuss it later after the win, but kind of bonus, who's handing you know? out these bonuses? Okay, because I am bona fide, I'll be knocking everybody out. Yeah. <laughs> Highlight reel. I mean, well, let's. I mean, don't forget your submissions, like, you're you're really good on the ground, too. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I know. I just, I like to give the people what they want. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's, that's <laughs> no, the coolest thing about this is I'm, no, I'm not. just so confident going into this fight that no matter where it happens, like I know that I'm going to find the finish. So right. this has just been like probably my best fight week going in like mentally, like everything has just came together perfectly. So I'm just super excited. So mentally, like when I think of happiness, I think of food. <laughs> <laughs> right so like when yeah. you're and stuff you can finally like have those kind of those meals that are like they're healthy but they are beneficial to the body what's your favorite like healthy meal for meal prep and stuff like that to make oh um Not so eat, but like what you're like when you get down to that weight and you're like oh yeah i can have like mine was acai bowls like i love those because i'm like dude. a food yeah dude acai is my oh my goodness that is my weakness it is it's that with like some crunchy peanut butter and honey or mm. that almond butter stop yes see <laughs> i i'm so lucky in this camp because um i'm i'm fighting it essentially my walk around weight um yeah we we wanted to go down to 115 but it was hard to find an opponent so we're taking what we can get but it's also at first i was like oh, no i want to fight at 15 but then like i got halfway through this camp and i've been eating steaks all week long steaks and eggs. I've been eating so freaking good. Like I, I feel amazing. So now I'm kind of 
second guessing going to 115 just because this fight week and this fight camp has been great where I like I'm still eating like clean but I'm eating like good healthy portions like I'm not going hungry right like, and I'm eating some good food so yeah because I mean like I don't I don't know about you I get a little moody when I like start my weight cuts I get a little moody and then once I'm used to it and I like I mentally have to be like now I'm moody on the inside I don't like you know, project that all the time, you know, out on the outwards, like sometimes, but not really, maybe like one out of 10. Are you, do you ever get moody? Like when you're hungry? <laughs> yeah. That's <laughs> why that after, like, does that ever that's why after about like Monday, Tuesday fight week, I can no longer teach kids after yeah. that. Like I'm taking the rest of the week off because you know, my, my temper is going to be very short there. Coach Anna will not be as nice. <laughs> well, and it's so true because they're like, I have kids. So like when I see them, they're like little and they're just so cute. And you, you like, but you're so hungry and you're like bubbling yeah. up. And you're like, okay, no, 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 no. Just walk away. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I feel well, like I have like 30 little kids. Do you? Yeah. That's, I mean, I just have to, <laughs> I couldn't imagine teaching. Um, but well, let's I mean the 115 range you would just like soar through yeah I want to bully these girls <laughs> yeah like yeah. you would bully because by the time I mean especially depending on what state you're in you get that a little bit of an allowance so you don't have to be mm -hmm. totally 115 it's like 16 and 9 or 16 and 6 or something but um but you could I mean that's 10 pounds away from like you said like you're really you walk around at 128 ish 125 yeah, I normally walk close to, um, if I'm like, not really like, I'm just eating clean, but not watching my diet too hard. It's usually around 130. Okay. Um, so when I started, because I was going down, we haven't fought at 115 since I was 14, 15 years 15, old. Yeah. Um, yeah, since I was 15. But um, my last or back August of last year, I was going down to a catch weight of 118. Mm -hmm. And um, I got down before my opponent pulled out. She pulled out like two days before weigh-ins. Okay. But when I was two days out, I was only four pounds over. So, wow. and that was coming off my water load. I hadn't dehydrated any, like I was still feeling good. I was definitely calorie depleted, but I was still felt good. And I was only four pounds out. So I'm very confident I'll be able to make that weight. And I feel like that's going to be the ideal weight class for me just yeah. because um, everyone does cut weight. So I don't always want to fight at 125 um, just because I know there's people coming down from 145, like mm -hmm. even heavier, like 150. So um, there's Makes always that game plan in it. Yeah, there's always that like uh, thought process in it. But I feel so strong in this camp that I don't know. I'm kind of like teetering back and forth because with this one, I've been eating everything. I've been lifting like I feel good and strong. Um, so as long as I can still feel that way at 115, then I feel like it might be the ideal weight for class for me. Yeah, because my next question was, is like at 115, 118, do you feel your power starts getting a little bit lighter or do you still feel pretty powerful? Yeah, I mean, I feel during that camp when I was going down that low, I felt amazing i felt like i was in probably the best shape of my life my power felt good um granted i didn't get to make the weight because the fight ended up not happening um, but that's why i really wanted to go to straw weight before i turned pro um but i think we had four or five fights throughout the end of my um probably last three or four months of 2022 where opponents just kept falling out and like nothing would go through yeah yeah it's, it's and like then, the in the regional level trying to find 115 yeah. or that are going to yeah. stay and that are good too because yeah i'm going to be honest with you you would walk through most of the 115 you know that weight division that i've seen thus far in the last two years you would it would just yeah. you know it would kind of be a, a moving punching bag for you <laughs> yeah i can't wait <laughs> you know so you yeah. really do have to go to that national level where you're going to be up against girls from other countries that's really yeah. what comes down to because in this country i mean you're kind of you know you're at the top of the list so yeah and that was that's really what turned us like towards the decision of going pro because mm -hmm. it was just became impossible to get fights like i would be what felt like a whole year spent in camp getting ready for fight after fight that ended up just not happening for some reason like and two or three of them were like the week of the fight so i've already put myself through eight weeks of Whoa. intense training like getting your, cause when you're in fight shape, you're in a rare form, right? Like you're mm -hmm. 
Whoever like says they're peaking. in tight shape all the like time. Like you peak. Yeah, that's, that's hard that's because when you're you're peaking, your camp set up to this, you're peaking on Saturday. I'm going to be peaking. That should be the, the very top of my, like, performance-wise. Um, so to get myself there over and over and over again for a fight not to happen, it just became to the point where I was going to lose my mind. I was like, yeah. Someone sign a dotted line. <laughs> like, we don't pay a you. contract. Yes. Yes. That's like, here, you can take my purse. Just come fight me. <laughs> Please. Yeah. Please fight me. Like, I, I need yeah. to compete. I need, yeah. Like, well, so on the national level, is there any, um, I mean, you know, the big promotions are always on the TV every weekend. Is there any um, 115 or that you would want to, you'd want to take on? Um, looking at the strawweight division, I, I mean, I'm on topology all the time, just like looking up these girls and all the time. Um, I don't necessarily, I don't feel like there's anyone in that division that would give me an issue. And if you feel differently, then please let me know and send me a name because I'll take any fight I can get at that point. Yeah. Is there any, like, is there any strawweight that you've looked at that you're like, oh, I, like that would be a good fight. That would be a good fight for me. Not honestly one that sticks out like that. I'm like, oh, that would be like a tough fight. Like there's obviously girls I see. I'm like, oh, you have no hands. Like, oh, yeah. this girl's just going to dive towards me. Um, I want to ask which you is, they are, but I don't know if that's a Which is, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of getting that this weekend. Like, I mean, I know that going in to most of my fights that most likely they're probably not going to want to stand with me. I'm not going to say never because I have had it happen. Um, but most of the time, as soon as we get out there and we start moving, um, I touch them once or twice immediately they start looking for that takedown mm -hmm. and that's the thing like I, I was watching my opponent um she really doesn't like to strike like she really it doesn't look like she looks comfortable on her feet um she will switch stances back and forth but she doesn't really throw much from her southpaw stance she'll like just move to move um so I just feel like um that's exactly what we get this weekend I know it <laughs> just coming that forward hugging pressure which I always feel like is a good matchup for me because that ends up on my highlights. So right, yeah. Well, yeah. you're. I mean, it's not just you know you touch them up. Your angles are so accurate and they're really hard to stay with. So I think that really causes a lot of issues for people that get in the cage with you too. Yeah, for sure. Those angles. <laughs> <laughs> those angles. <laughs> Anna Crescio's got different angles. <laughs> you don't want to mess with. <laughs> and so how has it been fighting for B2 since the, you know, you have, uh, it's been a while since you've been in the cage, but you oh. are undefeated. So how does it feel getting back in the cage for them? Oh, I'm so excited. Um, like last time I got to fight for B2 was Tori. And then, like I said, like everything, it just feels like I could never, we could never find the right matchups. So, so hard rock came to me. Um, I think we were at Tyler's pro debut a couple months ago back in February mm -hmm. he's like I think I have you someone like for real and I was like really <laughs> like I'm so excited so yeah That's I mean awesome. I, B2's always been like a great promotion y'all have always treated me amazing which I definitely appreciate so I'm excited to make my pro debut for you guys and in Trustville with my home crown around me so it's gonna be great on. And I mean, like, I know this is a fight and it's a fight fight, but we have to give a huge shout out to Bowers for taking this fight on and for sticking yes. with it because she's tough too. You know what I mean? So it's just great to have you guys do that together in the yeah. B2 series cage. Huge shout out no, to Hard Rock awesome. for lining this fight up. I was so excited when he sent me the the list. He's like, hey, can you do these interviews? And I was like, it's, hey, it's, hey, <laughs> yeah. So, well, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, we lost you for a second. I disappeared. There you go. <laughs> hey, we're back. <laughs> Don't cut out of me yet. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was just saying thank you so much for joining us today. And, um, man, Anna, we are so excited to see you this Saturday. Yes. Thank you, Gina. It was a pleasure to <laughs> chat with you. Good to see your face again. I can't wait for our Always. post fight interview. Always. <laughs> <laughs> All right, girl. We'll All talk right. to you soon. <laughs> Bye. All right, girl. Have a good one. You too.